Saturday, <laughs> my second most favorite day of the week. This is almost entirely due to the fact that it's the day, the day with the second least amount of school, with the class ending at the end of beginning of lunch. I opened my door confidently, myself but being more than confident of being able to get what. All right, whatever. Able to get enjoyment out of the fine weather and shorter class length. I confidently stride down the hallway and down the stairs to the lobby of the male dorms. I confidently look beside me, behind me, to see whose footsteps are approaching. I lose my confidence in the day being enjoyable. Hey man, what's up? <laughs> oh, Genji just ruined his day. That's fantastic. Not much, I guess. Just looking forward to the afternoon. You? He wraps his arm around my slumped shoulders far too comfortably. comfortably. Something's up. Let's stay outside, shall we? I was just about to before you stopped me. <laughs> he doesn't take my reaction to his theatrics well. Ignoring him, I walk outside and start down the steps. It doesn't take too long for him to catch up with me again. I wonder if he wants money or to rant about another conspiracy, maybe both. Or maybe both. I've got a bone to pick with you. Uh huh. It's about that blonde, you know, who I'm talking about. Conspiracy, you see, it is. For a moment, I contemplate feigning ignorance, but realize this will go quick quicker if I just let him get get it all out. Lily, the one from your class. You're the one. You're on first name terms with her. He looks positively shocked at this development. Did he not expect me to be able to answer? He gathers himself and coughs into his fist dramatically, like everyone else does. <coughs> well, never mind then. I'm here to warn you. You know, man to man. Warn me about what? Lily? Yeah, you don't know her, man. It's mostly true. I've only known her in Nako for less than two weeks. And even then, we've been exchanging battle chatter about school as we while away lunch. I'm pretty sure you don't either. That's not the point. You're the one spending inordinate amount of times with her. It distresses me that someone like Kenji, probably far out of the loop as one could possibly get, knows about such trivial facts as who I choose to be to befriend. Then again, I am a transfer student, and she's not the only representative of their class. She's not the only representative of their class, but also a tall blonde. Maybe I should appreciate this ranting as a warning that this rumor mill exists in this school and that it firmly within it. It's just lunch. Nothing special. Look man, under the bridge. See that bridge? You're under it. A man get you gotta do what a man's gotta do to get intel. You just gotta make sure you don't end up too far under the bridge. You're losing me, Kenji. That's okay, lots of people get lost. That's why I'm here to help. Just to be careful around her, okay? She looks harmless on the outside, but I've heard shit, bad shit. You know the student council, right? He seems involuntarily shudder as he says the words, putting him and Shizun together in her room. Is an amusing mental exercise. I wonder if they met. <laughs> That'd probably be really funny. If Shizun and Misha are in my class, I seem to have dodged the draft through, though. Good man, good man. But the spawn, she was there in the student council, right damn there. I see, and and she's not there now. Seriously, think about it. Something must have gone down. I stopped walking for a moment, giving the idea more than I probably should have. It would explain the fight that they two, the two had, at least in part. Wait, no, not really. Even leaving the student council would need a catalyst. In the end, it doesn't exa explain much at all, other than the fact that their feud goes back some ways. I guess you have a point. I'm not seeing how that really affects me, though. 
How can we now field this one? Lily's born, obviously. Obviously. Now, what nationality is she? I opened my mouth to give the answer, but realized I have none. In I have none. In fact, I have given the matter very little thought. Um, she's part Scottish, I think, if I remember. Given that she has no accent and acts perfectly Japanese, I suppose it never really seemed important. Now that he mentions it, though, I'm rather curious. To be honest, I don't know. Maybe English. They like to... <sighs> With a stereotype. Oh. I probably should have resort shouldn't resort to stereotypes, but that's the only lead I have. You're not thinking? Luckily you have me here to think for you. Gee, thanks. He brushes off the quip effortlessly. Now answer me this. Who has a lot of social power? Is filthy stinging rich. You know, blondes are all rich, right? Has a long history of disputes and used to move on to a much larger organization. The Roman Catholic Church. Well, okay, there's that. But, there's also the Mafia. Come on, rich, foreign, there's no way she doesn't have connections to them. I have reason to doubt the logic of his deductions, but he shows no sign of stopping. So do you know where I think she's from? Italy? Mainland Italy. So, small time, dude. She has to be from sick Sicily? All those Mafioso types come from there. Wait, no, Russia, damn, this could be bad. The Mafia there is a serious business, man. KGB everywhere. Pramila Paramilitaries, hardcore smuggling, and wait, wait, stop. Just slow down a sec. What point are you trying to get at here? You don't know what she'll do, man. I won't get in your way. Agents don't operate like that. But I just want you to be careful. When the time comes, we'll need all the help we can get. I don't want you. I don't want to lose you, comrade. Well, at least he's concerned for me, kind of. I wave goodbye to him as we separate out to our respective classes, but I'm not sure if that he sees the, gest the gesture. Piling, piling my books into my bag. I catch a glimpse of the library's books I borrowed last week. I might as well return them, considering they took all the two days to finish. I briefly consider inviting Hanako to the library, along to the library, but she's already gone. It'll probably be better for my studying if I'm alone anyway. With a quick stretch and wave to a couple of classmates who give them the same to me, I make my way out of the classroom. As I open my bag and shove the books to the return slot in front of the counter, I notice a strange person behind the desk, old and graying. She must be Yuko's replacement when she's working at the cafe. I begin to looking for a free table, a task made somewhat difficult considering that despite there not being many students in here, they're all sitting at their own table. Noticing a familiar hair, familiar, familiar head of hair, I walk to one near the braille section. It's hard to tell whether Lily's concentration is hard or not. Her placid expression holding perfectly still as her fingers slide across the dot-filled pages of her book. Hi, mind if I sit here? Hmm? Oh, no problem at all. She trails off, evidently still focused on her business, business at hand. Ah, his how? She gives a nod of a greeting as I sit opposite of her at the table. Plug a chemistry textbook out of my book bag and quickly thumb to the chapter we're covering in class. For a while, we sit there and read, each in our own way. Seeing her reminds me of what Kenji said in the morning, though. That and the fact I've never seen someone read in Braille before makes me keep throwing glances at her. You can just, like, stare at her for the whole time, she won't even notice. I kind of feel guilty about it, given that she has no way to realize I'm doing so, so I decide just to ask her about it. Her lineage isn't exactly a state secret, after all, and there's another thing I've only noticed from her movements. Hey Lily, mind if I ask you a question? Not at all, is there anything wrong? I was just wondering, you're at least part foreign, right? She gives a small giggle before setting down her book. I have always been amused at how squeamish people are about that. Akira's mention of how she and I look different from most others before. The details are a little bit complicated, 
but I'm half Japanese and half Scottish. See, yeah, I knew it, Scottish. That's not exactly where my finger, my first guess. It takes some effort to blurt it out loud. I try to con conjure image of the place in my mind. I think as far as the UK goes, Scotland isn't bad to live in, but I'm not really sure. My first guess was England, but surprised and close, at least ge geograph geographically. That does leave another question though. But you have no accent. That's where the details begin. I was born and raised on a playground where I spent most of my days. <laughs> raised in the shadow of Despite my mother being born. I get it. Hold on. If she moved to the dorms, then we do the cure working longer hours. <laughs> so, you don't live near the school? She gives a small sigh as if she didn't expect me to go any deeper. Was her previous frankness just a front? Not exactly. It's been a long time since we actually met. I feel like I'm not getting the whole story, but I don't really want to go unduly prying into her situation. Her about face so shows she's kind of awkward about it. So, do you speak ja much English? To be honest, I don't know that much about Scotland, but at least I know that main language there. It takes her a moment to recollect herself, appreciating the change in topic. That's right, my family mostly used Japanese around the house when I was young, but they made sure Akira and I ha knew our Scottish side just as well. I'm fluent in the language, but I'm also studying it in school to keep skills up and my and the qualifications on paper mainly. So you're bilingual. That's pretty impressive. I wouldn't go that far. Having parents who could speak the language is a large advantage. And English looks books in Braille are too hard to buy out. <sighs> to or import. With the Yuko's help at least. There are relatively high demands for a local English teacher here anyway, which also helps me give m motivation to learn it well. Demand for English teachers. For a moment, I wonder why she brought this up. You're planning to be an English teacher? She gives an enthusiastic nod. That's cool. It must be nice having such a definite future in mind. I've never really given much thought to mine. I'm kind of envious. Hmm. What's wrong? I just... I get to you as a teacher pretty easily. It suits you. For a moment, she's speechless. She lowers her face a little and lets out a nervous giggle. Something I've never seen her do before. With Lily's role as a rep class representative and her dependable nature, teaching does seem to be the line of work fitting her personality. Sorry, that was probably a little much. It is true, though. Waving her hand in front of her dismissively, she quickly recovers. It's not that, it's just that only one person ever has said that to me before. A short, somewhat awkward silence follows the discussion without knowing it. I end up steering into the troublesome topic again. And she tried to cheer her up a little. It was me who went to go her and got her brooding, after all. Wanna go grab lunch at the cafeteria after this? Might perk her up a bit, out, or at least take her mind off the, her apparent complicated family situation. Going by her si mile, it seems to have intended effect. I appreciate the thought, but the food there... Quite the quick re redirection of the conversation. She does have a point though, the food there isn't the greatest. Maybe the Shanghai. We could use an we could ask Nako if she wants to come as well. Ah. What is it? I almost forgot until you reminded me. Nako's birthday is coming up soon, and I was gonna go shopping in the city for a present tomorrow. If that's an invitation, I'd be ha happy to accompany you. The ability to get more used to the layout of the city probably be a good thing. I barely set foot in there, so I hopelessly lost my myself. She gives nod, signaling that she's happily approves the plan for Sunday. We eventually get back to her books, though, before I begin reading again. I still want one la last glance at her. Maybe I've been thinking on my situation too much. After all, 
Everybody here would have their own unique circumstances. The chance to get outside and clear my head will probably do me good. <laughs> Bored of standing in place and watching the television in the shop window, I'd pull myself away from the tacky display with a little effort. After living in y at Yamaku, the city seems like an entirely different world. No running in, hall in the halls, common orderly conduct is to be used at all times in the classrooms. Students are to exit rooms after checking both directions for oncomers. Elevators are reserved for the movement impaired students. Single file on stairs. Compared to such strict, almost regimental standards, the city's shopping arcade might as well be a strange country. It's a whole new world out there. While the school may have its fair share of hustle and bustle during the festival, the outside world is much different. It's a strange having arrived in the metropolitan city before my accident. This should feel more natural than Yamaku and the surrounding town ever could, yet feels foreign somehow. The elevated walkway and tall buildings ever adorned with billboards taller than three people don't do anything to distract me from the passing crowd reaction. Lily keeps her hand on my shoulder, the other holding a cane which taps to the ground with a metronome-like steadiness. Looking over to her, the neutral smile of her still holds. Having only seen her in a school uniform, <laughs> I'd not have recognized her as she sat on the bench waiting for me to come, if not for her cane propped up against it and her distinctive hair. I can tell whether the glance at her due to her height, her foreign looks, her obvious blindness were all three. Not that any of those would make the situation any less uncomfortable, but it is. Do you have any ideas what to look at first as hell? Her soft voice breaks me out of line, the thought. I can imagine, I can't imagine that she's failing to notice the attention she garners, but she seems unfazed by it. I get that she's feeling, uh, I get the feeling she's the type to enjoy walking outside. She, she might be used to it by now. Not really. This is my first time in the city, so I've got no idea where to go. She furrows her brow in thought, planning a route for us to take and come to think of it, way to communicate it. Something I noticed in the time I've been with her is how what is of her is how I've been with her is how when deep in thought she lacks close to any form of body language to show it. Her expression may change, but not a hint moved and shows. She seems to have little way, a uh, little in the way of sweeping physical gestures in general. But, though I assume it's part of her reserved nature. Is there a large electronics store near here? Ooh, electronics! I take a quick look around, mostly finding closed clothing stores. After a few sec, so oh. after a few seconds, I notice a store with a bright blue sign, some distance away. From that fits her disruption. Yeah, it's just a bit ahead of us. Should we go in that direction? Thankfully, it's just in the information she needed. With a nod, she starts off and heads toward Lily's unknown destination. Not much being a guide. Oh, here you go. One vanilla, one chocolate. I hand the money over the counter and take the cones to the railing that Lily's sitting on. Alright, so the city trip is different too. I can't believe I let her trick me like this. She not only led me to an ice cream stall, but also got me to buy her some. At least she gave me the money for hers. Sure enough, she patiently waiting where I left her. I guess she was planning on making the day an event rather than a sh simple shopping trip. Oh, I call out to her and slowly pace, place a vanilla cone in her outstretched hand, being careful to make sure she got good hold of it before letting go. At least her tastes are fairly normal. I was worried she'd ask for some weird flavor when she first asked. Here's the change. It's okay, keep it. I moved to protest, but realized the futility of doing so over the small amount. I slipped the coin into my pocket, supplementing my meager allowance ever so slightly. 
Lily shows no sign of wanting to get up, so I take seat beside her and start eating my own ice cream. The summer weather is nice. Hopefully it will hold out for a while. You too? I'm beginning to think I'm the only person who prefers winter. I contemplated her statement for a long moment. Yeah, I think you might be. <laughs> it draws the 10 degree to action. She's cute when she's pouting. Yeah, she is. Still, I can't really imagine what's so good about winter. You can't go out without bundling you up and you still freeze anyways. I used to live further north where there'd be plenty of snow to play in. So it's a little nostalgic. I don't like the heat very much either. Dude, okay. It's it's spring right now. Where the time I'm recording it, it's spring. It's it still snows. It's still snowing. What is up with that? At least you can wear a skirt, so don't complain about that. She gives an amused giggle as we both get back to finishing off our already made melting cones. I idly sit and watch the crowd going by and eat as we eat, catching a bit of pieces of conversation. Looking to Lily, I see her dutifully licking her ice cream from the top downward blissfully. Top downward, really? Wait, top downward. I, I do... Um, unaware of the fact that it's beginning to melt. Did she... I like that picture of her. It's melting. Where? Um, down a bit? She lowers her mouth on the top of the cone, but has no idea where the ice cream's dripping. <laughs> what follows is a game of guiding herself left and right until she finally finds it. To any onlooker, it must seem absolutely bizarre. A girl with her eyes closed turning her cone over and over as the guy next to her gives instructions. A strange variant of childhood blindfold games, maybe. <laughs> that was a cute game. No, that was cute. In good time, we finally finish our treats. And while away, the time conversing actually. Caught mid-sentence, Lily perked her head in her trademark manner, an unmistakable sign that sometimes caught her attention. Ah, uh, what is it? Is it here somewhere over there? I think I heard her. What? I raise an eyebrow as I look in the direction she's facing, somewhat doubtfully of her ability to pick out a Kira's low, lone voice in the din. Oh my god. Sure enough, though, a blonde girl in a suit can be seen through the tiny gaps between people walking each and every way. I'm gonna be right back again, because I, uh, I gotta fix something in my room. Just one sec.